everyone. How are you doing? I'm just going to wait a few minutes until we get a few people on. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're going to get started. It is one o'clock, so we're going to be prompt. Um, I decided to go come on and do this live and talk about the future and safety of events going forward. Um, people really aren't, I don't think they're really taking in consideration of all the new things that we're going to have to do in order to continue to have large events in our industry. And I mean, there's certain precautions that we're going to have to start to take regardless of if you're going to have 10 people at your event as we're going to start doing i'm um, starting here tomorrow and then in other places um they're moving forward and just opening up the city completely so what kind of precautions um, what kind of um legal implications are would you have um i've attended several um different um covid 19 um event um webinars to find out what's going on with the CDC, what's going on in our government, um, what are they thinking that we should do, when should we start, when, what should we allow. And there's just certain things that we need to, as event industry professionals and people just hosting events, the bride, the groom, because some of you haven't hired wedding planners or pro event professionals for your event. You may be having it at your home or you just you just planning your wedding by yourself. So you you need there's some precautions you may want to look at, consider when continuing to plan your wedding for the future, especially if it's within the next year. Um, first of all, I want to tell you to always check um, www.cdc.gov, G-O-V, slash COVID, C-O-V-I-D-19, and check that website frequently to find out what your area's um, suggestions are, what your legal implications are, can you have your event then, when are they going to cancel, um, you know, open things back up. For your area everything right now is per state so we you know I can't tell someone in in California when they're gonna open up or in Chicago that's something that you're gonna have to look in for yourself to find out what your state is allowing you to do right now I know here in Virginia starting tomorrow we're able to have socially distanced things with 10 people or if you're spread out within six feet of each other or socially distance events starting on tomorrow. So people are prepping for that. Um, you want to find out, look on the site and um, you can look up your particular state um, to find out uh, about your state's regulations. But that's the first thing you need to do is check the CDC website and find out because it's going to change. Um, it may be open this week and then they may a few months from now when they say the second cycle comes through they may close it back up again so we just don't know how long things are going to be open and for what the rules going to be if your state state uh, you know is going to make you do certain things so you definitely want to check that second you want to check out the cleaning methods and event policies your venue has implicated during the and after this pandemic so you need to contact the venue that you booked or when booking a venue, ask them, what kind of safety measures have you implicated for your events going forward? I know a lot of venues I've talked to now are 
only allowing six to five to six people to sit at each table, whereas before it was eight to 10. So they're spacing those out. They're actually spacing the each and every table at the venue for events out. They're planning to space them out six feet apart. So, um, and also some venues aren't allowing events over 50 yet. So people are gonna have to shrink down their guest list to 50. Some who are still allowing hundreds, 150, 200, 300, wow, guests to the events, you need to find out whether or not they have space for you to fit in their policies. And also you need to think about, you know, how close the people are gonna be at your event. So this is the time to start looking at your guest list and taking off people who don't necessarily, I wouldn't say have to be there, but you know, who can zoom in or who can um, video in, who can live stream in your event. So you may want to start thinking about shrinking your guest list down because a lot of venues between now and next year, summer of next year, maybe even the fall of next year, aren't gonna be able to host huge events with two and 300 people, especially if it's a hotel or some regulated type of venue. So you wanna always check with the venue, find out what their new policies are. Find out what their cleaning measures are after each particular event. So are they sanitizing all the chairs if they're offering you chairs with their venue? Are they sanitizing every single chair after each and every event? Are they sanitizing every table after each and every event? We know that, after, you know, we do put linens and things on tables, but people spill, people mess around with things, people do all types of things. I've seen some incre <laughs> incredible things at events that people do to these tables and chairs. So really, you know, even on a regular day, they need to be cleaning these chairs and tables, but hey, it's just me. <laughs> but nevertheless, find out what their cleaning measures are how are they cleaning the bathrooms at these events? Are they going through and cleaning them extremely well after each and every event? So you need to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Be very proactive in the questions that you ask your venue. It's very, very important that you know what the regulations are. And even if they are not spacing out the tables six feet apart, or they are still allowing eight to 10 people at each table, you need to, you need to find out whether or not um, you can fit those amount of people that you have on your guest list out. I think some people are having some trouble hearing me. So I'm gonna take the earphones out and I'm just gonna talk regularly. Hopefully we won't get any interruptions of all of my people coming down here doing their thing. <laughs> doing that thing <laughs> that's the thing about having to be at home it could be, it could get really loud so um like i was saying with the venues you even if your venue is not being proactive about making every um event spaced out you want to as the event host or the event planner or the person doing the event, you want to be very proactive in spacing people out because you don't want people on top of each other. I understand, you know, they're not for sure how it's spreading. They some one day they're saying it's airborne, the next day they're saying it's not. So we just don't want to take the chance. All right, next, how to pre-check wedding guests before attending your wedding. Okay. So right now, especially between now and the end of this year, maybe even the first of this year, you definitely want to pre-check each and every wedding guest before they come to your wedding. How do you do that? That's a lot of work. I know, I know. But you can do it easily by having it on your wedding website and you can make a simple little survey form that you make everybody fill out before they come. Also, you know, they, you may want to have ask these questions be, when they get there, but more than likely you want to ask it before they come because you don't want people spending money getting there and then you tell them they can't come. That, that can get a little spicy. So we don't want to do that. So on the form, first, you want to ask them, have they been out of the country? Because people are still traveling, okay? 
they they're not saying you can't travel so some people are traveling not some people are traveling because they want to some people are traveling because you know it's their job so you want to ask your guests have they been anywhere in the past two weeks before your wedding you want to ask that you ask them do they have any cold symptoms we know there's people who are asymptomatic or low symptomatic so you know that can't you know but we just don't want to take any chances so ask them have they been sick have they held a temperature in the past two weeks ask these questions um have they been out and about uh, without a mask on have they been you know just working in a big office with a lot of people so you know there's several questions that you want to ask and after we do this talk on my form that I had people who registered for this, um, this session, the form for how to uh, pre-screen your guests will be in your packet. So it's very detailed. It's not that long. It's only 10 questions. So, cause you know, you can't ask guests a whole lot of questions cause they just get bothered and they don't have time and they, they just start getting fussy. So it's just 10 simple questions. Most of them are yes and no. There's no a lot of details and you can just ask them put it on your website send it to them and keep it moving and so um you but you definitely want to pre-screen your guests before they come also when when on your wedding day um your host a lot of times your wedding hosts don't have a lot to do okay they pass out programs they, they register you your you know they check and help people with their seating charts um sometimes um they help with the the wedding gifts um and all of that so if you have gift you have gift host or regular host or hosts that are doing their programs or if you definitely hired a wedding planner make sure you have like a digital thermometer it just scans right across people's forehead you can buy them at walgreens you can definitely get them off amazon a lot of different places you can get them Get one or two of them. Um, I would suggest two, especially if you haven't, you know, quite a few people. Have some people when they first show up. Just take people's temperature. If their temperature is over 100 degrees, they can't come. I mean, you know, there are certain things you just can't do right now. So between now and the end of the year, if you're having an event and you check people's temperature, somebody happens to walk in and they have a temperature, they cannot come. So we don't know if they have the virus or if they have a, some other type of cold. We just don't know. And right now, everybody cannot get tested, immediate, get immediate results from the coronavirus test or even get the coronavirus test. So we just don't know what people have. So in order to be safe, to protect you and all your other guests, we're just going to scan people's foreheads and find out you know whether or not they have a temperature why use the scan one instead of the one they put in, in their mouth obviously because the scan one is a lot more sanitary you can just wipe it off with a little alcohol swab and keep it moving with the next person whereas if they stick it in their mouth you have to get the sleeve thing that you have from the hospital and you know trying to get those type of products right now is really hard let the hospitals have it don't order things that they need you know you know, alcohol swabs or buying alcohol and using, um, I can't even think. Oh, cotton, cotton to wipe it off with afterwards or tissue, then, you know, that'd be very sanitary for your event. So please, please, please pre-screen your guests before they come to the event because what we're trying to do is you slow down the spread, not you know, make your um, event a petri dish for spreading the coronavirus. Getting people in a room together like that, you just don't really know what's all in the room. So you want to be very proactive about what you're doing because, you know, the people that you invite to your event, you're supposed to love. So you care about them. So you don't want them contracting anything you know, this is supposed to be a good time, a joyous time. You don't want them to come there and then leave with something that they didn't necessarily want. I mean, nobody wants to get, you know, the coronavirus or any type of cold or any type of germ. So even if all of this dies down, these are just really 
things that we need to start thinking about doing, period. Because, you know, before we were very lax about having a lot of people. I mean, there's some events that I've been to, that I've hosted, that I've planned, that I've attended. There were so many guests that we was just in there like this. It was just so tight. I mean, everybody had a seat and everything, but we was in there. And so the fact that, you know, we haven't already had some type of pandemic that spread us throughout events and, and all these type of festivals and things, we have been really, really, really lucky as a people. So from here going forward, we really need to be more proactive about the safety measures we have because we just don't know. There's so many things that are airborne now or people just touching things. We just don't think about that thing, those things. So this is the time to start thinking about those things. Next, what event setup changes do you need to change in your wedding design so your celebration promotes social distancing? Like I had mentioned before about the venues, ask your venue, are they um, spacing out the tables? Ask your wedding planner to space out the tables for you in your layout design that they will send you. You know, be proactive about social distancing. One of the, um, if you have not booked your venue at this time, but you know, if you are in a very warm area or an area that stays warm a lot, or if your wedding is in the summer or in the spring or in the early fall, and you have not booked your venue, consider an outdoor venue. Why? Because of the cir air circulation. You're not stuck in a bu building. Um, even if you are in a ballroom or some type of location like that, think about the circulation in the room. Think about renting HEPA filter air cleaners for the room to clean the air frequently because you are in the room, they're in the room, so many other people are in the room. Even if you're spread apart, you're still all crammed into this ballroom breathing. And if they are asymptomatic and they don't know, you know, that could be in the air. So if you have HEPA filters going in the room, going on cleaning the air as the event is going on, that'd be great. Another thing you can ask your venue is when was the last time they cleaned their filters and what type of filters they use. So these are other things you can be asking. And like I said, you need to be proactive about your safety measures and what you're doing to your at your events. Even if your venue is not doing it or you don't have a planner who knows much about these type of things, these are things you as a person who's having the event to, you know, need to consider. I mean, there's a lot more things to consider now. Also, um, with your event design, find out how often if you're renting linens that they clean their linens. What they what do they clean their linens with? You know, do they use high heat to clean the linens? You know, personally at this time, you know, I would just you know, at the at, you know, at the cost, linens cost, especially if you're not getting very fancy linens, if you're just getting a solid color, purchase your linens. They cost just the same as renting them now. They're almost the same quality, if not the same quality. And so you're and you're paying the same price. So buy your linens for your event if you have not already gotten them. For you know, you're not gonna pay any more. And you know they're brand new. They've never been used. They come in plastic. They're sanitary. And you know there's no germs on them. So that's another thing you can use in your event design. Um, I know some decorators don't like you to go out and get your own linens. But in these, you know, people have to make um, some substitutions and think about things and really take, you know, these actions and these measures going forward. So even if they don't want you to go out and purchase them, have them to purchase new linens for you or purchase the linens and give it to them about two to three weeks beforehand. But, you know, don't cut the number because you're going to probably need more because of social distancing. But, you know, you can usually get your linen order at, you know, three to four weeks before your event. So just make sure your RSVPs are in. 
Um, I know a lot more people will probably not come to events. Um, you know, your close friends, the people who want to be there will be there, but it's going to be a lot of cancellation. So don't be upset about it. A lot of people just don't want to be in a room or a space with a lot of people. So don't really take offense and, you know, just, you know, don't be bothered with, don't, don't get upset. Don't get mad. You know, just understand that people just don't want to be in the space. So Purchase your linens is another great safety way to um, to enforce a cleaner and, and more sanitary environment. Um, purchasing your own linen napkins. Actually, you know, we may, you know, there's some really, really, really good paper napkins that are almost like um, fabric out there that you can purchase for your wedding. And those are very sanitary. I do understand if you want the look of the linen napkins and you can have the look of the linen napkins on the table, but not have people use them and have paper napkins for them to actually use. Some people are still going to use the, the linen. That's just what they do. So, but buy brand new ones and they don't cost much either. So consider these things when you're doing your event design. All right. What's next? Let me see here. Um, should everybody attend my wedding or should some only attend by video? Okay. These are where the hard questions are asked because, you know, should grandma the, attend your wedding? If you're still having a hundred, 200 people there within the next year, you know, you want her to be there. You waited this long for her to be there. It's your dream for her to be there. She, you know, she wants to be there. But real, I mean, really, should she be there? No. But, you know, we all have hard-headed grandparents or what, and they're going to be there. So, I mean, we, you know, if they want to come to the ceremony, um, have them a special place in the ceremony away from people, but in the front, you know, we're going to have to start having more VIP sections, you know, especially for the, you know, the older ones or people who have sicknesses that they cannot, you know, contract different things. So you, you may have to have a section of your ceremony area off to the side or in the front and then space the chairs back so they're not close to them. So you want to do something like that. Have more VIP sections because you want them to be there. They're going to want to come. You can tell them not to come all, all you want, but, you know, they're, they're going to show up. So, and then at the reception, have them a special area off closer to probably where the your, your ventilation system is. Like I said, like your HEPA filter system area where it's right there. So when the new air comes out, they're breathing in the new filtered air. They're not breathing in the whole section's air. So put them over there um, very in a very visible section where they can see, you know, kind of make it special. Put a special linen on the table. Put a special centerpiece on the table. Make it very VIP so they don't feel like they're just being ostracized ostracized and thrown to the side make them feel special because you know they love that so um make it very vip for them and um it'll be very good for them and then you know after you cut the cake and they had the dinner then you know they can leave um you can have them you know taken back to the hotel or their home or what have you but they've attended they was in the pictures and it's great so these are just some things that you should think about. Also, you know, when I was talking about cutting down your guest list. Okay, so you still want these people to come. So how are they going to come? Hire, you know, a lot of people have been, you know, not really hiring video tech people. But this is the time you need to hire a video specialist who actually specialize in live stream. Um, live stream is going to be very important for weddings here on out. And you need to um, hire somebody who is, who is a professional person who can live stream your wedding for those guests who cannot attend, who really don't want to attend big group events at this time or next, you know, later on next year. Um, just period for the future. Hire someone to professionally live stream. Why a professional? So you can get a nice clear picture 
nice clear video people who can interact with people while they're talking there so it feels like that they're there and um participating someone who can answer them while they're talking um you can have you know somebody professional who's live streaming it and then like you know some one of your friends or someone who's very social to be there to, you know, not everybody can be a bridesmaid. So somebody can be your social um, expert who's there, who's interacting with the guests at the reception and at the ceremony and, and doing all these different things. And cause you can bring in people from the videos to say different things and it's recorded the entire time. So not only are they watching it, during the ceremony is actually being recorded with them so you'll have two videos you'll actually have your wedding video and then you'll have your live stream wedding video with your other guests that attended by video so that's awesome so and then you know people can send in your gifts and come to your wedding and they were there they were at the ceremony they were at the reception and it's wonderful so everybody got to experience it but just in a different way so we really kind of have to think out of the box um going forward about these events so you can still have 300 people there at your wedding but maybe only 50 came but you know the other 250 were on live stream or facebook live or zoom or whatever streaming product google or whatever streaming product that you have or whatever your professional um, streaming person is using for your particular event. So not gotten going for it. Not everybody needs to come to your event. Not everybody who's going to want to come to your event. So especially between now and the end of the year. So we need to consider these options and really take them seriously. All right. Has your booked or new wedding professionals implemented new safety procedures and requirements since the pandemic started? This is really important for like catering companies, your cake person, anybody who's really handling the items that people are eating or doing it besides your venue. You know, the photographer, not so much because, you know, obviously your photographer is usually one or two people. They don't touch anything. They're just taking pictures. They're usually back somewhere. They're not all up in your face. So not really not the photographers or the videographers or, you know, any a lot of, of the other vendors. But, you know, people who are providing food and cake and stuff like that, your bartender, you need to find out what type of um, precautions have they put in place. I know a lot of caterers now have stopped the buffet option, the station option, pretty much everything right now from what I see is plated for now. Are they charging extra? Yes, because they have to um, pay for extra staff. Now, you may not have to pay extra depending on how many guests you had versus what you have now. So if you were doing a wedding for 200 and now you only have 75 or 50, then, you know, of course it's going to drop, but you know, you're still going to be paying more per person, but you're not going to be paying as much as you was before because your guest list has dropped. So right now, buffets are just not a great, great option. Now, there is a way you can do a buffet or stations. Um, that is sanitary. And that's if you have people serving the food. The problem with the buffet is I go up to the buffet. I might have a mask on, but I'm touching the tongs and I pick up the food and I put it down. The next person behind me touches the same tongs, picks up the food and puts it down. So that happens like 80 times. They're not going to have new tongs for each and every person that goes through the line. So that's 80 people that touch those tongs or 200 people, or 100 people, however many people touch those tongs or the spoon. So if you have servers at the stations serving the food and you only have so many people in the line spaced out getting the food and the food is facing the server and not facing the people so the people are not breathing on the food you know there's certain things that you have to consider so you can still do stations you still can do buffets but they have to take in these precautions 
they need to serve the food. They need to have on the gloves while they're serving the food. Their staff need to have on masks. Um, and then there's only a certain amount of people who can be in the line at a time getting their food. And then, honestly, right now, although I love real plates, I love real silverware, this is the time to buy really nice disposable utensils and plates because of all the germs that are on the plates. Not only is it un, you know, it may be fine for the person eating because it's a um because it's a cleaning plate when they get it. But you got to consider the catering company who has to clean the dishes after it's over with. There's a lot of germs, there's a lot of disease, there's a lot of everything on those. So and even with that, you know, if you're still wanting to have real plates, you may, as a guest, be asked to empty your plate out and take a napkin and wipe it off and stack it in a particular area so they don't have to touch your particular germs. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that's going to be implemented and don't really get upset about the new policy. Yes, it's different. You know, after September 11th, things changed. We got over it. We all go to the airport. I hate taking off my shoes, but I take them off. Now I go to the airport with slides on. If I want to have on some other shoes, I pack them in my bag and I change them after I get past the gate. You know, I don't like the fact that, you know, I have to go through the whole process, but we're all used to the new process. This is new and these are new processes and a lot of these things are going to stick. So it's new. We may not like them all, but it's best for us, it's best for you, it's best for everyone. So there's just some things that we're just going to have to get used to. Just like September 11th, things didn't go back to the way they were. Um, it used to be fun. I remember when I could go and see people off and fly off on the plane and wave like they could really see me out the window when the plane is going up. Now you can't do all that. And you know... Although that's an experience we've missed out on, you know, for years and years and years, we're all over it. We know the rules. And so these are just new things that's going to happen. It's best for all of us. Honestly, we should have been doing a lot of this stuff in the past. Like I said, I'm surprised, very surprised that some things didn't break out before now. I mean, because like I said, especially in somebody, you've been to festivals like Y'all been to some festivals where it's like you're touching people. You've been to concerts where you're literally touching like 50 people. That's like a thousand people there, you know? I mean, really, what could have... You don't know what these people had. What did they have? Come on. What did they have? Exactly. We could have been spreading a lot of things. So these are a lot of things we should have been implementing. But now we know and we're going to do better. Because when you know better, you do better. Exactly. So that's what we're going to do. All right. How can I lessen the amount of guests at my wedding without sacrificing the look and experience I've always dreamed of having? And like I have talked about that with the Zoom and the live stream and having somebody work the live stream and a professional taping the live stream. But, you know, actually, I know a lot of, we get a lot of requests for flashy weddings. And then, you know, you try to bring it down to fit in people's budget, but sometimes they just don't down and to, and to make sure it fits into their budget. So, you know, now you can have that awesome event if you lessen your guests. You know, there's a certain things called the style shoot. So, you know, you may right now only can have 10 people at your event. But when you look at some of these style shoots in magazines and in ads and on, you know, in, and on Pinterest, you know, you see the whole beautiful tablescape and the great big centerpieces and the big flowers going down and draping to the floor and all of that. That is a lot of money. But if you only have to do it once, 
which is all you would have to do if you're only having less than 10 people at your wedding. You can get that phenomenal look that you wanted. You can get that, you know, extraordinary floral down arbor with the crystals and everything that you wanted and dreamed of having and have the beautiful style pictures, you know, model-less pictures from your photographer, you know, and, and the, some fantastic food you'll have the experience you want it the look you want it the pictures you want it and your guests will still be there not in person but they'll be in your your live stream and all of that so you'll still get that experience you can still i mean i've seen where you can still do your first dances and all of these things so you know even with 50 people if you're bringing your wedding down from 200 to 50 people or 75 people, you know, you can up the look of your event, but bring down the number and still have the guests there just live streamed in. So that's how you can still have the experience, still have the look, still have the design and even more design that you can afford now. So don't think of it as a sacrifice. Yes, you're sacrificing a whole bunch of people there. But, you know, just, you know, you're trading your sacrifice for a whole lot of people actually there for a better design, a better look. So, you know, there's some pros, there's some cons. So kind of look at the positive. I'm a glass half full type of person. So, and I hope your wedding planner is a glass half full type of person too. I hope they're not a Debbie Downer. If so, find a new one. But, you know, think about what, what this is going on. I know people are upset and sad. I would be upset and sad if I had dreamed this whole wedding out. I had planned it out. I had to reschedule, move it to a whole nother year. You know, it's a lot. And even if you're just now getting engaged, you don't really get to plan your wedding like people plan their wedding just in February. So, you know, I understand there's some experiences that you've lost. And then, you know, give your time to grieve over it. Don't, you know, you don't have to be all like, oh, I'm so excited. You know, I understand. I understand there is, you know, a lot of sacrifices being made. Nobody's really got any answers. Nobody can really tell you what they're going to do because a lot of people just don't have a plan. You know, even big hotel chains, a lot of them don't have a plan. A lot of these bigger venues don't have a plan. This is new for everybody. So don't be upset if people can't give you an answer it's because if the CDC don't have an answer and the government don't have an answer, you know, you can't expect for them to have an answer either. The only reason why I can even give you direction on what's going on is because I've been listening to all of these different things and finding out, you know, what kind of safety measures are we doing? How can I use what I've heard on the CDC, on the news, on these webinars to better the events in the future. And these are the things we can do because this is what we're doing now for restaurants that are opening on Friday or next week or next month, whenever your city opens up. So we need to take what we're doing on, on other things and use them for our future events because the safety matters. And, you know, like I said, you don't want people coming to your events free and clear of any type of ailments and then going back home, finding out, you know, a week or two later that they have Corona. And then, you know, that's, that's a whole nother thing. Cause some people have a hard time getting over it and some people get over it really fast. And then some people, you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, we don't want to really put people in those type of situations. So we really need to consider this even when this is over with. All right. Do you think couples can wait out the pandemic until everything is back to the way it was? Or do you think weddings and big events are forever changed? Honestly, and you see, I'm at home. My dog is crazy. Barking at who? No one. Anyway, nevertheless, no, I don't think we're going to ever go back to the way it all the way was. Will we be able to have big events again? Possibly. Um, are we going to be limiting the amount of people coming to events? Probably. Um, how long do you think this is going to last? Honestly, 
if we do get back to the way things were, I don't think we're going to be able to do this probably until like 2022. Um, because even if you have an event with 200 people or 300 people, you send out the invitations. Who's? I mean, if I'm not really that close to you, I'm not going to come. I'll send you a really nice gift. I'll attend on Zoom and watch it. I'll do all of those things. But, you know, I'm not going to come. Um, if I'm your planner, of course I'm going to come. I'll be there. I'm going to have on my mask. My staff is going to have on their mask. We're going to have on plenty of gloves and all of these things. We have our safety measures down. But what I'm saying is as far as your guests, you know, a lot of them are not going to, especially if you're having an inside you know, and I, right now I'm calling the inside like a Petri dish, especially if they don't have good filtration. So you're in the room, you, you're you breathing all the air and the, whew, that's a lot going on to ask somebody. So if people think about that, that's not a really good idea. If they're outside, maybe. And that's what I'm saying. Consider your venue. So if you want to still have a big wedding going in the future, you may want to now consider having your wedding at an outdoor event, there's plenty of wineries are fantastic because they do a wine tasting with your guests. Yes, yes. Really good. And it usually comes with your package. So that's always great. So wineries are great. Um, you know, there's a lot of historic homes that have a lot of acreage that you can use the land for. Um, there's a lot of different um, type, you know, parks. You know you can rent out a park, a lot of really, really pretty parks. Parks aren't cheap. What's not cheap is renting your chairs and tables and tents. That gets into the money, but by the time you rent your chairs, your tables, and your tents, it's like you paid for a venue. So, you know, think about it. And you can get people, you can spread them out far. It doesn't look empty. So, you know, you really, in the future, you need to start thinking about these different things. So, right now... I don't think we're going to even come close to being able to go back to having events the way they were. But, you know, maybe in a couple of years, we may come close. But I don't think we're ever going to go completely back to the way things were. Because, you know, now that we're thinking about the sanitary measures, thinking about what we've done in the past, thinking about how this coronavirus spreads, and thinking about, hmm, we just don't know what's out there because... We were spreading it in February, and nobody was paying attention. So, you know, and then we, it finally caught up, and then we decided to shut things down with, the, you know, the government. So, you need to start thinking about these things. All right. Is it okay for me to go ahead with booking and planning our destination wedding now, or should I settle for a wedding in my local area? And this is my last topic for today. And, um... Yes. The reason why I say go ahead and start planning your destination wedding now, because a lot of them are starting to open up within the next week or two. Some of them are opening up in June, and then some of them are not opening up like England. A lot of places in England are not opening up until July. Um, so you want to definitely call whatever location you're trying to have it at destination wedding i know you some of the destinations they they don't really call they do a lot of email talk so you want to get in contact with the venue that you're thinking about if you're having a destination wedding or work with your wedding planner to start booking your destination wedding a lot of them i've been getting a lot of discounts in my email for different locations so a lot of people are running specials so this is the time to jump on it and i know you're like but it's a destination wedding. I don't really feel comfortable planning my destination wedding now. What if this happens again? Or what if something happens? Or what if people don't really want to come? You know, if you cancel within 30 days, most of them will give you all of your money back. Except for your deposit. So, like I'll tell people with anything that you're planning for an event, always look and look at your contracts before you sign them. Okay, so look at your contracts, but a lot of them, especially now, even if they don't give you your money back, they have really, really, really great um, redo dates, um, 
where you can reschedule your dates. So um, a lot of them are have very, even if they didn't have the policy before, they know that this whole virus nobody knew about. So even if you had one plan before, call them up because a lot of them are openly allowing people to reschedule their dates for next year. So think about it. Start planning. Catch some of these deals. You know, this is the time to get some of the things if you're the bride and groom that you couldn't necessarily get before because there's some specials that people weren't offering. I mean, people have lost in this industry a ton of money because there's no events that's been happening for the past three months because we weren't allowed to have them per the government and who wanted to have them because of this spread. You know, we're all concerned about the spread of this disease. So take advantage of these new, um, discounts that are coming up plan your destination wedding you're not going to lose any money because people are refunding it or giving you time to be able to reschedule it for another time um, people are going to want to go somewhere don't give up on your dream if you wanted to get married in santorini greece get married in greece if you wanted to get married in england go to england if you want to jamaica go to jamaica but you know if you can't go you can get a refund or you can get a reschedule date um, a lot of the airlines are allowing you to reschedule your flights, even if it says you not you couldn't reschedule your flights. So look on their websites. A lot of things have changed, especially in the last like two three weeks, and things are going to continue to change. People don't want to lose out on the money, and they want to be you know everybody actually right now you know the whole hashtag is. Let's work together. So a lot of everybody's really, really working together to help you, to help you have your events, to help you have your weddings, to help you have your celebrations. We're just all trying to work through this together to make these things as safe and secure as possible because we all want to slow down and stop the spread of this virus. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants to see anybody die from it. Nobody wants to see anybody suffer. And, you know, events and celebrations are what they are. Celebrations to have a good time to celebrate your marriage, your exciting future. And things are exciting. Your future is exciting. We're excited. You should be excited. Yes, there's a lot of new things. But, hey. We're going to get through this together and it's going to be awesome. So, but if you have any more questions about any type of safety procedures or things you may want to have to look at or look through or questions you should be asking people, feel free to inbox me on my Facebook page, my One Elegant Event Wedding and Event Planning Facebook page. I'll be happy to answer you. You can um, send me a message through my website, www.oneelegantevent.com, and I'll be happy to answer you. But just feel free to reach out and ask me whatever question you may have. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you out. And for those who want the transcript of this, and because there's a lot of little tips and a lot of little extra things that I added in to help you with your planning in the future, your future celebrations that are on there, Please sign up for those. And if you didn't sign up, put your email at the end of these comments and I'll be happy to send them out to you, okay? Well, you guys have a great afternoon, the great rest of your week. Be safe. Oh, yeah, by the way, a good um, wedding favor nowadays are masks. Because mm -hmm. people should wear masks at your event. So, you know, instead of those beer koozies, get some masks. They'll love them. But anyway, like I said, that's also in the transcripts of nice new favors that will work for your wedding. So that are great safety precautions. So they play double duty. So you can add your email to the bottom and you'll get that in your email. All right. Well, you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.